Titanic Creek community who I know are uh, in their lockdown and are anxiously awaiting updates. We have nine new cases of COVID-19 in the Northern Territory that have been verified in the last 24 hours. Seven of these cases are in the Tannock Creek Barclay region. Uh, all of them are at the Whoopa camp and one is uh, a resident from Tannock Creek. So not in any remote communities, all in that uh, Tannock Creek facility, but we are very concerned about this outbreak and uh, our teams are working around the clock to make sure that we have testing, we're delivering vaccine uh, and making sure the community is kept safe. And I thank everybody in the Tannock Creek region for their compliance. Our police have uh, reported largely um, good compliance and so we thank them for that. I'll just go through um, the seven cases in Tannock Creek. The other two cases are in the Centre for National Resilience uh, and I'll provide some details uh, after I go through the Tannock Creek cases. Um, so the Tennant Creek cases, um, the first case is a lady in her 60s. She's from Whooper Camp. Um, she has some pre-existing vulnerabilities um, and she's quite unwell. She's been transferred to the Tennant Creek Hospital. Uh, the second lady is in her 50s and she is also from Whooper Camp and she has also been transferred to the Tennant Creek Hospital. We also have a female and male in their 40s um, from that same town camp uh, and they've been transferred to the Alice Springs Hospital for their medical care. Uh, we also have additional cases, um, a male and female in their 20s, uh, and they're at the Tennant Creek Hospital. Um, then we have um, a child um, who is from Tennant Creek um, and is a known household um, contact. We believe that all of these cases are linked to the Catherine Cluster, so we're working through that um, in terms of the, the genomic sequencing and, and uh, trying to establish that link, but everything points to that. The process is that um, the individuals have all been identified in that Whooper Town Camp. We have tested every resident of that um, town camp uh, since this cluster became apparent. Um, people um, are in isolation and then we work through whether they need to go to the Tannock Creek Hospital or whether they're transferred to Alice Springs. Um, so considering these case numbers in Tennant Creek, we are actively considering extending that lockdown, uh, but we haven't made a final decision on that. We will get more information from our health teams, our chief health officer and our territory controller, and that decision will be made tomorrow. But it does look likely that we will extend that lockdown. The two other cases that I just spoke about are both in the Centre for National Resilience and they are international returned travellers and they're from that Johannesburg flight from the 12th of December. So we've seen quite a number of cases off that flight um, and they um, have also seen Omicron from those. So we'll do the genomic sequencing on those cases and then update the community, but there's two more positives from there. Um, and as I just said, they're in the Centre for National Resilience, so they're a very low risk to the territory community. Um, and so that's 10 cases from that flight. So that uh, has certainly seen a number of flights. Um, I'll also just provide an update on a case that was previously announced in the Centre for National Resilience. It was a case of a Singapore flight. Um, further testing and work has um, been provided and it's been declared that that was an old case of COVID um, that was picked up. So that is no longer a, a case and that will be removed from the territory records. Um, so that um, will be delisted. In total, we've got 236 close contacts in the Northern Territory at present. 183 have been successfully contacted and are isolating, and we've also received 153 negative tests. So we just work through, um, as we do the um, interviews with people that are testing positive, they provide us with information. So you see those close contacts going up and down, uh, but that's the situation presently. Most um, of those, um, have been uh, in terms of contact. Um, we've had teams working through the weekend, so we'll, we'll keep doing that. Um, we had a number of contacts move from Central Australia to the Centre for National Resilience yesterday um, from both uh, Yalara and Tennant Creek. And I understand there'll be more people transferred from Tennant Creek up to the Centre for National Resilience at Howard Springs today. Uh, so um, just in terms of Tennant Creek, um, it is obviously a significant situation there. We'll keep working with the community, um, but I would like to acknowledge that after two days of lockdown, the community has been very compliant and we thank them um, for their cooperation in these efforts to keep the community safe. Um, we have had some infringement notices issued um, in Barunga. 
um, and some public court health order breaches um, for people not wearing their masks, which of course is disappointing. Um, the reason the mask mandate was put in place through some of those communities, we just want to make absolutely sure that there is no further cases. We would, um, you know, we didn't want to take that mask um, away and then suddenly next week heading into Christmas see cases appear. So it really is in the community's best interest, so please follow the Chief Health Order directions. Um, and the Chief Health Officer uh, directions, they're not a guideline, they're the law, and so penalties will be issued. We've had a very much an educative approach um, since the beginning of the pandemic, but if people are blatantly going to um, refuse to wear masks and follow those directions, then they will be issued an infringement notice. Oh, sorry, in Tennant Creek, I didn't mention that we've done 330 tests in Tennant Creek in the past 24 hours. Um, so that's a significant number of tests. Um, we have had our Aboriginal medical organisation, Anna Ginning, out on the ground delivering vaccine along with NT Health. Um, we have delivered a small number of vaccines, but we really want to see that vaccine number rise. Um, in terms of the vaccine, COVID is in the Tennant Creek community. If you get vaccinated, it is uh, the best tool to keeping you, your loved ones and your community safe. And it's not too late. And there won't be any questions asked when you turn up for vaccine. Please just come forward and get vaccinated and also make sure you get your second shot and if you're eligible, your booster shot. So a really important message for the community of Tannock Creek. We're really pleased with 330 tests, but we need to see that vaccine rate increase. Um, and it will certainly, if we see that rate lifting, it will help us as we make some tough decisions over the coming days. Um, so we will continue to, to be on the ground in Tannock Creek, um, in Whopper Town Camp, um, offering people that vaccine, uh, making sure that people are receiving um, everything that they need. Um, and in terms of territory-wide, we still need Territorians. Um, make sure if you're due for your uh, second dose or your booster, please come forward um, for those vaccinations, particularly through the Christmas period. You may have a, a little bit of time. Um, please make sure you get it. And particularly if you are intending to travel, don't think it's something I'll wait till I get back from traveling. It's really important that you have um, that before you travel. So that's the update for the community. Um, I'm happy to take any questions. Hearing reports of some delays in processing the tests, is that accurate? What's the timeline looking like? No, I think people need to understand that we have um, strict medical processes, clinical processes around this. So uh, we have people that come forward and they're tested and as Territorians know, that can take 24, 48 hours. We then have people that are close contacts and so we absolutely prioritise those tests. Uh, and in terms of Tennant Creek, we've got um, quite a strong system. We are actively testing people. We had then have flights taking those down to Alice Springs and then they're run through the laboratories. But it does take time to come back for a positive test. Um, it is quite simple if it's a negative test. They, they run in batches and um, it, it's negative. But if we do see a positive detection of COVID, they have to run further tests to verify that. So I think that um, these tests we're seeing turned around in, in 24 hours or so is very efficient. And I would like to commend not only the health teams, but those logistical um, staff that are working with them to ensure that we're getting those results quickly into our laboratories. Do you have any update on wastewater sites? Um, Indigenous medical, um, Amsam's got in touch with us and said that they're concerned that there hasn't been any updates on wastewater and that's what they're really using to prepare. So wastewater is going to become less and less relevant in the Northern Territory, particularly from tomorrow. There is going to be people in our community that previously had COVID and they will be shedding that virus and it will have detections in wastewater. Uh, and so we have been testing the wastewater. It is as we expect. And so what that means, it's positive in those catchments where we know we've had COVID, so Binjari, Bicentennial. Um, but it, it's not the tool that it was a few weeks ago. We've got COVID in our community. And so as we see more and more people who have, have um, gotten over the infectious stage of their illness, they, they're well, but they're still shedding that virus. They'll be moving around. So it, it's not the tool it was um, to guide us. It, it's still important. Um, and our authorities are still testing. But what I can say is that the wastewater positivity is as we expect it in the Northern Territory based on the cases we have received. Opening up very soon, how many travellers are we 
expecting, especially tomorrow, coming via road net? We certainly are expecting um, a significant number of people um, to, to move to the Northern Territory to come into the Territory. Um, people have been waiting to return on the 20th. We've seen some people come in and they've undertaken a couple of days home quarantine knowing that they can then um, leave on Monday. But we still have public health measures to protect our community. We still have that important testing regime and we need people to be very conscious of their health. But we are stepping forward to the new normal uh, from tomorrow. But in terms of the government's modelling, how many people are you expecting in every day? Uh, I'd be happy to seek some advice on numbers. Um, we certainly know the flights that are arriving and we do see a number of people choosing at this time during the pandemic to travel via road. Um, but we are expecting significant numbers of travellers into the Territory. Uh, I can seek advice on to what specifics we've got. What can arrivals expect when they get to the airport or to the border um, lines in terms of showing their negative test results? Um. It's probably a really important message. So the border forms were changed this morning around 9am. So people that are travelling, um, we did alert them to the changes in the forms. It's to do with the new testing compliance regime. So people should make sure that they've got their border form filled in before they arrive in the Territory. And we do ask people to be patient. This is a significant step forward. Uh, domestic travel is not going to be what it used to be, where you simply jumped off the plane with your hand luggage and zipped out of the terminal. It will be slower. There is processes in place, but they are for important public health and safety reasons. And so we ask people to uh, keep that in mind when they're arriving into the Territory. And please respect our staff that are working really hard. They're giving up their holiday time as we head into Christmas to make sure you can arrive into the Territory. I also had a couple of questions. We're very concerned about any of these individuals that have got COVID, particularly if they're not vaccinated and there is underlying health issues. We're still working through the vaccination status on a number of the people that have tested positive um, and our teams will provide them with the best care. But it is a message to all Territorians, COVID is here. It's a disease that we've kept out of the Territory and illness we've kept out for so long, but it is here now, so please get vaccinated. Um, so we've got one individual, as I understand, in ICU in Alice Springs. I spoke to that yesterday, uh, but she's stable. Uh, and these other individuals, they're receiving the appropriate care. Uh, and we're trying to, to balance um, some of their wishes to stay on country, uh, for example, in the Tannock Creek region, as well as providing that appropriate medical care. So you're going to need to show that you're, you've had a negative test when you arrive. Correct. What if your test result hasn't come back by the time you get on the plane? Yeah, so people do need to have that test um, and if they do travel into the Territory and they can't show that they have had a negative PCR test, um, then they will be ordered to immediately go and get a PCR test and they must remain in isolation until they get that test result. So uh, we can put the CHO directions from when the moment people land in the Territory. Some people have said, well, why don't you make you know, the airlines check these before they get on the plane? We don't have that jurisdiction, but uh, the incentive is very much there for travellers. Um, get everything in order, and I point to it just not being what domestic travel used to be. You're wearing a face mask, you've got to get your test result. So it's 72 hours or less. There has been some questions from the community. So um, you, you can have that 72 hours to, to get the test, so that should provide time to get the result before you leave. But if you do arrive in the Territory without it, there is arrangements um, to ensure that you get that test. Um, are there ADF or any extra police resources on the ground at Tennant Creek? Uh, so we have um, received assistance from the ADF um, and we thank them for that and the Commonwealth Government. I would have to check with the Territory Control to their exact locations. Um, we have a range of Commonwealth and Territory public servants working right across the Territory. Um, some of them are based in Darwin and Alice Springs but they're very much focused on the Tennant Creek situation. Others, as we know, are on the ground in Tennant Creek. So just to clarify, why are people from Hilara being sent to Howard Springs and not to the Todd facility? Yeah, so we need to make sure that we um, balance our resources. The Todd facility does have good capacity, but um, we had a, a number of close contacts there, so uh, the decision was made um, that they should come up to the top end, so we, we charter those flights to, to get them safely there. So yes, it's a little extra distance, but at the same time, it allows us to, to balance our resources. We've got plenty of capacity at the Centre for National Resilience. Uh, we'll have even more from tomorrow. So these are operational logistical decisions that are made. Do you have a breakdown of Indigenous versus non-Indigenous from the community um, cases, like the community cases? Um, I will have to seek advice on that. I'm happy to provide it off camera. Thank you.